So, Terry, let me ask you that. So, I saw that they, uh, you know, yeah, I did the Punky Brewster reboot. How did that come about? How did that start? And was you excited to do that? Oh, my God. So, I found out about the reboot like everybody else did online. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, my my uncle didn't tell me. They, like, kept it a secret, which is probably good because I would tell everybody. My daddy says I'll tell on Jesus. So, <laughs> you to tell on Jesus. <laughs> Walmart and the second somebody said, ain't you that girl? We was like, like, didn't you hear? We going to come back. We going to have a <laughs> I done told it. So they didn't tell me and like, there probably like an hour of people calling me tomorrow. Are you doing a reboot? I was like, man, I ain't never heard no reboot. So I they did. called me. And then I was like, what? And she's like, your uncle didn't tell you? I was like, no. <laughs> and then after she hung up, my uncle called me. And I was like, are you serious? No, <laughs> Anything to me. My uncle was like, "Well, I need your agent's name because we're about to call and negotiate your deal." I was like, "Done." And um, yeah, it was it was the best experience of my life. I say that Punky Brewster, the original, was the best experience of my life. But coming back and getting to do another season, we only got one season. They canceled us because ain't nobody know we had a reboot. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't know. They get a lot of advertising. I just started but, watching it on Peacock myself, like a few months. <laughs> I didn't know. And, and, and that's how it is. Everybody's just catching up to it now, which I think is phenomenal. But to be able to go back and work on something that we had done 36 years, I think it was, it was like something like 36 yes. years prior, yeah. um, is amazing. And it was a dream come true. And I cried on set every single day. Not these years. But I was definitely the set crybaby. I was sentimental. <laughs> it hit me a different way, you know, uh, to sit on the same set and to sit with my best friend who I had met now 40 years prior and to be able to work with her and do it all over again. Amazing. Yes. I mean, I, I know it probably just felt like, probably gave you chills, like I'm right here, right back on the set. You it was that. surreal. It was really surreal. It's like, okay, so Punky happened 40 years ago now, right? Yeah. I don't really watch the show, but when I see clips or somebody posts online, I giggle because I know that it's me, but it's like looking at somebody else. <laughs> like you, like you looking at a child, like that was me. Yeah, it's like, it, that's cool. I know that's me, but uh, it looks like my daughter, you know? Yeah. So you don't and go the, back and watch it, the old? I don't. Mm. Why did why is that? I heard that a lot, like actors and everything. They don't like to watch their work. Well, you know, I do that too. So why do you think? Yeah, when, I started, <laughs> when I started producing, it became important to sit through editing and edit stuff. Mm -hmm. I never really realized I didn't watch myself until like the editor was saying, What did you think? And I I do this. For some reason, when I come on the screen, I naturally like look down because I never did it good enough. I always mm -hmm. wish I got to do like one more take. Yes. Even though the producers were satisfied with it or whatever, like it, it's never good enough. Perfectionist. That's that's how we are. But not on other people. Mm. Like I don't pick other people apart. I enjoy other people, but I don't. Yes, really me too. People. I, I feel you. I'm the same. I don't watch TV though, not often. Okay. Um, so I know uh, sticking with the reboot. Uh, when you was a little. On Punky Brewster, you know, you were super boy crazy. And then and then the reboot, your character, you know, it represented the LGBTQ community. So were you nervous about that? Like, wonder what people was gonna think. And how did you feel when that was brought to you? I've never lived my life being nervous about what anyone's gonna think about me mm -hmm. because somebody always has an opinion, and I'm never gonna be able to please everybody ever. Um, the producers were actually nervous when they brought it to me. Uh, they Soleil was like, let me call her. They didn't want Soleil to call me. They wanted to do it like very professional. And I started laughing because I, when we did the pilot, we did a pilot a year before we got picked up. Uh, and they were teeter-tottering on whether I should keep my ring on because I had my personal ring on. And I was like, should I take it off? They were like, no, keep it on. We think she's in a relationship. Well, we're not sure. They weren't sure whether my relationship was going to be interracial because as a kid, I loved Alan. Um, or who my relationship was going to be with. So then they decided that they wanted her to be lesbian. When I got the phone call, uh, I was like, hey guys, what's up? The whole room got quiet because we were still like during COVID. So everything was like virtual or whatever. And I was like, look, you got to do me a favor. 
they were like, well, how do you feel about it? I was like, I'm all for it, but you better give me some eye candy. She's got to have some TNA. And, she, and the room got quiet. And I was like, what's wrong? I said, she got to be bad. You got you to have me a daddy. I'm sorry. No offense, but don't give me no dyke. Don't give me nobody who looks <laughs> much because men have told me since I was a little girl that you were my first crush. There were not a lot of representations of us on TV at that time. There was like one or two. So I said, those men who loved me have to now love her. They got to fantasize about the both of us. And if they can't, this won't work. So every day when they were auditioning, they were like, oh, we think we found her. I was like, is she hot though? Is she <laughs> and they, they, I, I, they were like pleasantly shocked, but the room was in silence. And then all of a sudden when they started talking again, they were laughing and they were like, no, we're taking notes. So it was poor Jessica, Jessica Nicole played my fiance because we did get uh, engaged at the end of the show. Um, when Jessica walked on the set, you know, we were masked and shielded. We couldn't see each other. I saw her 10 minutes before I kissed her. And when she took her mask off, one of the producers looked at me and was like, like, did I do it? I was like, oh, did, I do it? did I hook you up? Did I hook you up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so that was the, that was the, the feel of the set. It was fun, loving, and, and amazing to come back to. How did the community? Lesbian and all. How did the, the community feel, like the comments and everything you was getting, Twitter tweets and all? I was ready for it. And I have to say, you know, our Black Christians had a problem. But the, the community has always been my supporters mm -hmm. forever. They were the first ones who invited me to a book signing when I became an author. Um, they dressed me my whole entire career. Um, and they've always welcomed me with open arms. So to know that I represented them and I represented them well, makes me proud. Because a lot of time you hear, well, why couldn't you get an actress who is living that lifestyle to play that role? Or, you know, they have issues, but they were like, girl, we done love you since you was little. And I was like, I done loved you too. <laughs> <laughs> I loved you too. But I, I represent the community anytime that I can. And I don't think a lot of people know that. The first solo book that I wrote, Peaches and Cream, I just did another interview, so it was sitting here. Shameless plug. But um, <laughs> Peaches is a little bye-bye. Mm. You know? And so I've never had a problem representing anything.